welcome back again for our ongoing series on the glories of our beloved Vrindavan Dham. Before we begin, we'd like to offer our obeisances to he who reveals the Dham to us, our beloved Sri Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavari Paschata Deshatarane O glories to Prabhupada. So, uh, while introducing our last class entitled um, Come Play With Me, we mentioned that as Krishna grows up, he matures through um, three stages until he reaches adulthood, which is 16 years old, and he remains like that forever. And those three stages up until adulthood, you remember, are called um, childhood, Kumara, which is from uh, birth to five years of age. <coughs> then um, boyhood, uh, Boganda, which is from six years to ten years old. And then his youth, Kaishura, which lasts from 11 years to 15 years old. And we also mentioned that each of those three stages lasts uh, five years. And during that lecture, I said we would discuss in more detail those three stages. And so that's what we're going to do today with great pleasure. <laughs> um, in researching for this particular lecture today, I had to do a lot more research <laughs> to fulfill my uh, promise. <laughs> I actually realized more than ever how much we owe to Sridhar Prabhupada and our previous acharyas. They've given us everything that's meaningful in our lives. <coughs> our scriptures, our way of life, the holy names of Krishna. And um, I came across two very beautiful verses that I would like to, to recite on behalf of all of us to, to honor um, our ever well-wishers, our, our, our benefactors today. And I read them in um, one of my favorite um, books, of course, Srila Rupa Goswami's Padyavali. Two verses. And the, the translations are done by um, Gopinath Acharya Das. I mentioned him the other day. He is a devotee scholar from um, our Oxford project in Iskon, <coughs> in England. So <coughs> very, very, very beautiful verses honoring our, our benefactors. <coughs> Let us bow down to them whose radiant sandals deliver those stuck in the dried mud of the ocean of life. By hearing the two syllables Krishna from them, our hair dances as we are overcome by bliss. O earth, for as long as sun and moon do shine, please bear that best of men that pious person whose mind is motionless with the joy as he remembers Hari, whose body bristles, whose eyes overflow with tears of bliss. Why bear the burden of those others who have resolved to come and go in this abode of death? Hare Krishna, Srila Rupa Goswami. <coughs> so now, <coughs> Let us go uh, deeper in learning about these three stages of Krishna's growing up. There's a lot of nectar. So at the beginning of his childhood, that very first stage of uh, Komara, I was reading, Krishna's very chubby, and his limbs are described as tender as blue lotuses. And the edges of his eyes are white, and his uh, small teeth are just beginning to show. And the Acharyas say that during this time, Mother Yashoda cannot take her eyes off her son as he sucks his big toe. <coughs> and while sometimes crying and sometimes laughing, he um, throws his legs up in the air, like you see little toddlers do. 
when they're lying on their back. And um, Sri Rupa Goswami writes about this early stage of, of Krishna's life, again in Padyavali, very beautifully in uh, text 107. He writes, uh, When can I see Krishna, lovely and alluring, like a blooming blackwood, his lotus face pressed into his mother's breast while he wiggles his lotus toes? <laughs> so during this uh, period of, of Krishna's life, Mother Yashoda, uh, I was reading, she covers Krishna with protective charms. And every morning she hangs a, a tiger's claw around his uh, neck and she ties a, a cord around his waist and a string around his wrist. And then she paints uh, tilak marks on his body. And, um, and then she smears mascara around, around Krishna's eyes to protect him from the glare of the sun. Now towards the middle of this um, first stage of childhood, um, it's described Krishna occasionally crawls about. But when he reaches the end part of this period of, of his childhood, he becomes very proficient in crawling. And at that time, he pleases his parents with the charming way he speaks in broken language as he begins to form words. And <clears throat> I was reading that perhaps the most notable feature of this period is Krishna's discovery that he can have food stuff other than his mother's breast milk. He's getting a little older, so he's discovering he can have other, besides his mother's breast milk, he can have things like butter and yogurt. And the Acharyas say he relishes these things with great enthusiasm, although they say he can't have them all the time. <laughs> he's still dependent on his mother's breast milk. So during this period, Mother Yasoda often takes Krishna in her lap and showers him with her love. And um, there's a very beautiful description of, of Mother Yashoda, again in Padyavali, <laughs> by Rupa Goswami. I think it's verse 128. He describes her so beautifully. Poetry often gives us the essence and the mood of something. So Rupa Goswami writes about Mother Yashoda. Her lotus navel child in her lap, her complexion like new, new clouds, Garbed in multicolored clothes, constantly I bow to Drishoda, who delights the whole world. Now during uh, the final stage of Krishna's childhood, years one to five, Krishna's by this time, you know, like four, five, he's, he's on his feet, he's walking about. And at this stage, he and his friends begin to herd calves and play games in the fields just outside Gokula, because they're still pretty young. They don't go very far. They, they remain under the watchful eyes of the older cowherd men. But it's good training. <laughs> and the Acharyas write, it's so beautiful, uh, dressed in a short dhoti, he carries a stick in his hand in imitation of the cowherd men and wears a peacock feather in his hair, which is braided and tied in a top knot. Hearing all these things, you just get this very beautiful, real impression of, of, of Krishna. <laughs> We're hearing what he looks like, and we become so attracted. <clears throat> and the Acharyas, they, they, they go on to say, quote, there in the nearby pasturing grounds, Krishna eats his lunch. Not at, not at home as previously, but with his friends. And when I'm reading, uh, you know, these last months, uh, I, I find so many descriptions of this noon pastime of Krishna in my readings, where he takes prasadam with his friends each day. It's always a big thing. And all this um, eating is done in a very fun and loving way, with lots of joking. I mean, the coward boys in Krishna, they spent a lot of time joking. And um, Siddhar Prabhupada refers to this joking mood in a wonderful purport in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 13th chapter, <coughs> verse number 11. Just came across this. He writes, 
Quote, <clears throat> when Krishna was eating with his cowherd boyfriends, a certain bumblebee came there to take part in the eating. Then Krishna joked, why have you come to disturb my Brahmana friend, Madhu Mangal? You want to kill a Brahman? This is not good. And Prabhupada continues, all the boys would laugh and enjoy speaking such joking words while eating. Thus the inhabitants of the higher planets were astonished at how the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who eats only when yagya is offered, was now eating like an ordinary child with his friends in the forest. So yes, we were speaking about this, um, you know, this, they have a lot of, they're, they're taking prasadam together each day in a very fun and loving way with lots of joking. And then Prabhupada shares one of the jokes with us in <laughs> one of his purports in Srimad Bhagavatam. It's amazing. <coughs> so now we'll <coughs> move on to the next stage of Krishna's growing up, uh, his boyhood age called uh, Boganda. And this, again, this is from six years old to 10 years old. So in this phase of life, uh, I was reading, Krishna ventures out a little further into the many forests of Vrindavan to herd the cows with his friends. Now while he's doing that, <coughs> you know, herding cows and with his friends, the Acharyas say he's also uh, mastering different uh, games with his friends. <coughs> learning certain wrestling holds, as well as uh, specific dancing steps. <laughs> and during this particular period, Krishna's wearing a very short uh, silken dhoti, and he's adorned with um, gunja berry necklaces, uh, a, a peacock feather crown, uh, jasmine garlands, and flowers on his ears at this particular period of his growing up. <clears throat> he's much more mature by this time. And I, 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 I read a very nice passage where it, wherein it's described that after having visited Vrindavan when Krishna was just a baby, a group of traveling minstrels, a group of traveling minstrels, those who travel and play music, you know, as a, as a profession, a way of life and to entertain people, a group of traveling minstrels returned uh, to Braja during this boyhood stage of Krishna's life. They, they came through Vrindavan when he's just a little baby. <laughs> but they came again some years later when, when Krishna was a little bit older, when he was in this Boganda stage. And it's described that they were amazed to see how beautiful Krishna had become how beautiful he'd actually become. And there's a passage where they, where they reveal how they're so amazed. Oh Krishna, these minstrels <coughs> said, your abdomen is like a beautiful ashvata leaf. Your throat now has three lines of a conch and your lips have stolen the redness of rubies. Like a moon on earth, your attractive features give bliss to the eyes of your friends, as they do to ours as well. I'm going to recite that again. The minstrel, they, they, they saw him as a baby. Now they see them in his, his second stage. Oh, Krishna, your abdomen is like a beautiful asfata leaf. Your throat now has three lines of a conch, and your lips have stolen the redness of rubies. Like a moon on earth, your attractive features give bliss to the eyes of your friends, as they do to ours as well. <laughs> nice insight there. <clears throat> so in the middle stage of this boyhood period, this is like sub-period, in the middle stage of this boyhood period, Krishna becomes expert in his duty of herding cows and calves to these distant pastors. And as he gets a little older now, he starts wearing a very colorful turban, decorated with a golden rope for tying calves. And this turban is also bristling with flower buds and peacock feathers. And I also read that at this time he holds a black 
a gold-caped staff in his hand uh, for three purposes. To control the, 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 uh, the cows and the calves, to play fight with his friends, and it said to declare himself heir, the future heir to Brudge's throne. Now, his, his facial features become a little finer at this stage. And people begin to notice his, um, his, his raised nose and neck and his rounded uh, chin and cheeks. But the most striking component of, um, of Krishna's beauty at this age, I was reading, <coughs> is the sweetness that emanates from his form. It's the sweetness that emanates from his form. And this final, th now the, the final stage of this boyhood period, we're, these are sub-periods we're just talking about now, the final stage of this boyhood period is marked by <coughs> uh, his, his changing mental disposition, his locks of hair, which uh, look like bumblebees, that, um, that, that dance playfully on his forehead, one Acharya describes. And at this point, his hair is so long that it reaches to his hips when braided. Also, no, uh, the Bajabasis notice that his, his shoulders become wider. They note that his um, turban's al always a little tilted. They note that he's wearing um, saffron tilak and that he's always twirling a lotus in his hand. And it's mentioned, because he's getting older now, it's mentioned that all these things together become the talk of the young Gopis in Vrindavan. Hare Krishna. And I found a nice verse in uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, 3.3.75, that, re that reveals how, these, um, how the girls start talking about Krishna, the gopis. And uh, it's it's um, it's it's Krishna's friend Subal speaking. And I quote, <coughs> speaking to Krishna, <coughs> o, o Keshava, your attractive clothing, the tilted turban, the play lotus in your hand, the golden tilak on your forehead, and the dot of musk, are making me, courageous Subal, completely dizzy. How much more will this affect the naturally susceptible gopis? All right, Krishna. So now we move on. The third and final stage of Krishna's growing up is his youth, uh, Kaishora, which lasts from uh, 11 to 15 years. And this is a very significant development in, in Krishna's life and pastimes, this particular stage. 11 to 15. You could say it's like, um, of all the stages, it's like the most, those three stages, three, three primary stages, it's like the most important. <laughs> I say that because um, this is actually what Lord, Ch Lord Chaitanya said. Lord Chaitanya noted this particular um, third stage in his growing up. Um, that's described in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita when um, Lord Chaitanya was having a, a meeting with that, that devotee, Raghupati Upadhyaya, in a dialogram. Um, at that particular meeting, Lord Chaitanya asked uh, Raghupati Upadhyaya, <coughs> quote, of the three uh, ages of Krishna, Krishna known as childhood, boyhood, and fresh youth, which do you consider the best? Of the three ages of Krishna, known as childhood, boyhood, and fresh youth, which do you consider best? So Raghupati Upadhyaya replied, Vaya kashora kam jayam. Vaya kashora kam jayam. Fresh youth is the best age. So next the Lord inquired, uh, what did he say? Amongst all the mellows, which do you consider the best? So Raghupati 
Upadhyaya replied, the mellow of amorous love is superior. So Sri Chaitanya Mah Mahaprabhu, he concluded, he said, you have certainly given first class conclusions. So there in that first question, he, he asked this devotee, you know, what is the, of the three primary stages of Krishna's youth, which is the best? And uh, Raghupati Upadhyaya replied, Vaya Kashora Kam Jayam, fresh youth is the best age. So even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu confirmed it. So there's actually a lot of detailed information about this particular stage of Krishna's growing up, 11 to 15, Kaishora. And the, uh, the first stage of this youth, <coughs> when he's around 11 <coughs> or 12, is a, a change in Krishna's appearance. For example, I was reading his body, bodily hue becomes uh, dark and glossy. And it's described um, uh, more like the splendor of a sapphire than the color of a blue lotus. Whew. How deep do our acharyas go? <laughs> Krishna's bodily hue at this age becomes dark and glossy. And how so? Well, more like the splendor of a sapphire than the color of a blue lotus. Whew. And the acharyas say that, quote, the soft, uh, fine hair appearing on his limbs adds to both the darkness and texture of his complexion. And they also say that his, um, his eyebrows become thicker and start to resemble Cupid's legendary bow. And then Krishna takes advantage of this change by shooting arrow-like glances from his bow at the young Braja Gopis, Hare Krishna. <laughs> and finally, whereas the, the, um, the, the whites of his eyes were previously clear, <coughs> their corners are now tinged with a, uh, a distinctive reddish hue. And Krishna's appearance is, is uh, further enhanced by um, a, a new manner of dressing. Start, you know, he starts changing. You know, at, people dress differently at different ages. So, it's Krishna growing a little older now. Uh, at this age, he starts uh, dressing like a, a dancing actor on stage. I remember that from reading the Krishna book in the earlier years. Krishna starts dressing like a, a dancing actor on a stage with um, elaborate uh, knee-length Vajayanti garlands. Remember, a Vajayanti garland is five types of flowers. So he starts wearing these very elaborate knee-length Vajayanti garlands as he, as he dresses like a dancing actor on a stage. It's also stated that, um, this is really interesting, that while both the peacock feather and flute um, are not new companions in, in Krishna's adventures, they are now proud emblems of his youth. Well, both the peacock feather and the flute um, are not new companions, because we described them earlier as well, in Krishna's adventures. At this age, they are now proud emblems of his youth. <laughs> this is pure nectar. <laughs> Another interesting development is um, <coughs> Krishna's ability to play very sweet, mind-enchanting flute melodies even more enchanting than ever before. He becomes very proficient at playing his flute. And I also came across the following statement. Uh, according to some gopis, this is due to Krishna's having taken flute lessons from Srimati Radharani. He becomes better at playing the flute than ever before. How so? According to some gopis, this is due to Krishna's having taken flute lessons from Srimati Radharani. Hare Krishna. So now a few um, other bodily characteristics um, of Krishna appear at this age. It's described the, um, the, the sharpness of his, uh, his fingernails become sharper and his um, teeth 
appear a, a little more reddish. So I thought that was interesting. Um, it's described actually that instead of being round like full moons, Krishna's fingernails appear like a line of sharp arrows. And I was wondering, his teeth become red? <laughs> but I, I looked closer <laughs> at the fine print, and um, his, his teeth become a, a little reddish as a result of chewing pan. And um, it's at this point of his maturing that the gopis begin to speak about Krishna's transition into youth, whereby they can start having um, more amorous pastimes with him. <clears throat> but one Acharya said that they're thinking of him more now, but the result is that very often when thinking like this, their senses and their bodies become stunned. Now as Krishna enters his 13th year, uh, his arms become muscular, his chest becomes very broad, and his thighs become very clearly masculine, as described. W one acharya, well, I'll recite one acharya, describing Krishna at this stage. He says, <coughs> <coughs> The wealth of his sweetness is visible in the increased luster of his face, his endearing soft smile, and his restless eyes that constantly agitate the minds of young girls by hinting at amorous intentions. Just as Krishna uh, perfects his flute playing in the first stage of youth, he now perfects his singing, enchanting the world and inducing chaste women to break their vows of marriage. Now what, uh, what is very significant is that, that at this age, Krishna uh, begins Rasa Leela with the, um, the Braja Gopis of Vrindavan at around 15. And it's described that all his bodily features become more alluring than previously. And that um, whereas he, before you could see three lines on his neck, now three lines are clearly manifest on, on his abdomen, near his navel. <laughs> Lots of details about God. <laughs> if you want to love someone, you have to know all about them. <laughs> so now when Krishna arrives at the age of 16 years, he stops growing. He never ages beyond that. What does that mean? Essentially, he remains ever youthful. Nayovanam cha. And for the gopis, this is the age of Krishna that they prefer the most. One acharya says, quote, Krishna's paramount sweetness at this age defeats Cupid's, Cupid's arrows, makes women lose all composure, is a playground for the 64 amorous arts, and causes an awakening of amorous love not relishable during his previous ages. And the, ef the effect of Krishna's eternal youth at 16 years of age on the gopis is described by Sri Rupa Goswami and Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, 2-1, verse 333, in the following way. The gopis are speaking about Krishna. O Krishna, today your age of youth in the role of guru is teaching the golden gopis the art of whispering in each other's ears, making verses, uh, verses of praise for messengers when alone, cleverness in cheating their husbands, practice in sneaking to the forest at night, and deafness to the words of elders, and finally rapt in hearing the flute sound. Hare Krishna. We're going pretty deep there. It's all on the transcendental platform the love of the Rajabhasis for Krishna and Krishna's love for the Rajabhasis, just relishing seeing their beloved as he goes through these three stages of childhood uh, up until he's an adult, 16 years old, uh, all attractive forever in that particular age. <clears throat> so before concluding, I, I think it would be appropriate um, just to mention and describe a little bit Krishna's brother <laughs> and constant companion through all of his youthful pastimes. 
And of course, that's Lord Balaram. In Iskand, we have you know many sets of Krishna Balaram deities. So the, the two of, of two of them grew up through this uh, youthful stage of Krishna's life. And Balaram, being a little older than Krishna, of course, we've described previously that he's always in a mood to protect Krishna and serve Krishna. He has that dual rasa. He's the older brother, a little older, so he's always protecting Krishna, but because Krishna is the original supreme personality of God and Balaram's the first expansion, Balaram considers himself subservient. Although Prabhupada said um, Krishna and Balaram, the only difference is that Krishna is bluish black like a monsoon cloud and Balaram's white like an autumn cloud. Otherwise, they're the same. So, yes, his complexion is whitish, although sometimes it's described, I was reading, his complexion is like shining crystal. Yeah, a couple of times I came across that. His, his complexion is sh uh, like shining crystal. And of course, Balaram wears blue clothing, which I read uh, inspires many of Krishna's friends to also wear blue cloth. They're inspired seeing Balaram in blue. So Krishna's friends, they also put on blue sometimes. And Balaram's um, hair is, is tied in a top knot. I was reading uh, priceless earrings swing against his cheeks. His neck is graced with uh, forest flower garlands and jeweled necklaces. And his arms are thick with bracelets, brace, bracelets and armlets. And the Acharyas, uh, in one particular section I was reading, they, they concluded that, um, quote, upon his feet tinkle splendid Chintamani anklets that have acquired their philosopher's stone nature from their constant resting place on his feet. <laughs> we all know him as the emblem of youthful luster, as Krishna's protector, as the greatest reservoir of nectarian mellows, Obeisances to him, Dauji, Lord Balaram. Krishna Balaram Ki. <coughs> so today <coughs> we discuss so many nectarian details about our beloved Krishna. And as I said in the very beginning of the lecture, all this and more is available to us by the grace of Sridhar Prabhupada and our previous Acharyas. And higher up, we, we have other well-wishers as well, <laughs> including the Lord himself. <laughs> and the residents of his transcendental abode, Sri Vrindavan Dham, they're also inviting us back home, back to Godhead. The whole of the spiritual world is inviting us back. We have to accept that invitation wholeheartedly. So I'd like to conclude today in praise of them, the Lord and his associates, the Brajabhasis, I'd like to, to praise them. We praise in the beginning, we praise in the middle, and we praise in the end. We never forget where the mercy is coming from. So let's conclude today in praise of the Lord and the Brajabhasis with the, the following prayers. Again by Sri Rupa Goswami, but this time from his masterpiece, Utkalika Valari. That's another one of my favorites. Utkalika Valari. My, my dear God brother, uh, Bhakti Bhringa Govinda Maharaj, he introduced me to this, this scripture many, many years ago. Utkalika Valari. So we'll, we'll, pray, we'll repeat <laughs> Rupa Goswami's prayers <laughs> to glorify those above who are sending us mercy. <clears throat> o affectionate people of Braj, who always enjoy transcendental pastimes in this place with the son and daughter of the best of the gopas. Please hear my choked words and be merciful to me. O Queen Lalita, the hero and heroine who enjoy transcendental pastimes in the cottage, forest, and hill are always obedient to you. Therefore, since nothing is difficult for you, please be kind and accept me. O Shubal, you are the intimate friend of the son and daughter of the best of the gopas in Braja. 
please be merciful and, and, and introduce this unhappy person to your two friends. Oh, you great lovers of the master and mistress of my life, referring to those previous personalities, please hear my appeal with compassion. This poor, lowly-hearted living entity who is not even a sesame seed in comparison to you asks, will I be able to attain the loving service of the divine couple? Will I be able to attain the loving service of the divine couple? Hare Krishna. So, Hare Krishna. So, uh, nice to hear about Krishna. I often tell people that um, it, it's, it's nice to believe in God, but um, it's difficult to love someone you know nothing about. Who is God? He's God. Where does he reside? Up there. I'm not being disrespectful. That's nice. I mean, <laughs> it's very important to be um, pious, to be religious. But the beauty, the contribution of this International Society for Krishna Consciousness, our Guru Parampara, is that we're giving so many details about the Supreme Personality, his consort, his associates, his abode, the nature of the loving sentiments. So it's so easy to fall out of love with this material world and into love with the divine couple and Sri Vrindavan Dham and all their associates. So how indebted we are <laughs> to our acharyas who come from there and reveal all this wonderful information for us. So let us take this information to heart and um, serve them to the best of our ability and serve them here devotional service and practice and then one day spontaneously in the spiritual sky. It may take some time but we have time. <laughs> Thank you everyone. We'll be back in a couple of days um, with some more nectar on the um, 12 forests of Vrindavan and on Raj Mandala, Sri Vrindavan Dham. All glories to Sri Rabaobad. Shri Shri Gauranitai ki, Shri Shri Krishna Balaram ki, Shri Shri Arashama Sundar ki, Vrindavaneshwari Shri Mati Radharani ki, Shri Krishna Balaram ki, Mayapur Dham ki, Shri Shri Gauranitai ki, back home, back to Godhead ki, Jai Jai Sri Sri Radhe Sham Hare Krishna Jai Prabhupada